Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis of the Shankar Ace Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team. This news analysis is for the current affairs for the date 17th of October 2024. Now let us look at the topic for discussion. The article title SC verdict today on challenge to the section 6A of Citizenship Act from the Indian Express talks about the section 6A from the Assam Accord. The next article title Army to commemorate the 62 years of the Battle of Wallong with China from the Hindu covers about the Battle of Wallong. And third and final article titled Rupee Sharp Slide How much lower can it go from the live mint talks about the depreciation of the Indian rupee. So, without any much further delay, let's get into the article's discussion one by one. So, before that, there is just a small announcement to be made. The pre-storming UPSC prelims test series of 2025 is starting from the 19th of October for the batch 2. So, interested students can look for the link in the description for their admission. Now, without any much delay, let's get into the article's discussion. Now, moving on to the first news, the Supreme Court will rule today on the constitutionality of section 6a of the citizenship act of 1955 which grants citizenship to immigrants who have entered assam before january 1st of 1966 here the petitioners argue that it threatens assam's demographics and the indigenous rights of the people while the center defends it as a under parliament's authority and the other opponents fear that striking it down can render many people as stateless. That is nothing but taking away the rights of the citizenship of many people and making them stateless and depriving them of basic rights. Now let us see what citizenship is. Citizenship defines the legal relationship between individuals and states granting specific rights and duties. Here under article 5 to 11 of part 2 of the constitution, it covers citizenship by birth, descent, naturalization, registration, renunciation and termination. Citizenship is under the union list making it as the exclusive domain of the parliament. So parliament has the ultimate give on the citizenship. Now so let us look into what Citizenship Act of 1955 is. The Citizenship Act of 1955 regulates citizenship matters in India. It has been amended for six times in 1986, in 1992, in 2003, 2005, 2050 and recently in 2019. The 2019 amendment grants citizenship to illegal migrants to Hindu, Sikhs, Buddhist and Jain, Parsis and Christian communities from Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan who have entered India before 31st of December 2014. In section 6A of the Citizenship Act of 1955, it deals with the special provisions for the citizenship of persons covered by the Assam Accord. Now let us see what is the Assam Accord. The Assam Accord of 1985 was a tripartite agreement between the central government, the Assam government and the Assam movement leaders to address illegal migration from Bangladesh. Tripartite is nothing but agreement of three subjects. Here the accord introduced section 6a in the Citizenship Act of 1955 where specific to Assam to manage migration after the 1971 Bangladesh liberation war. So, before January 1st of 1966, migrants from Bangladesh were deemed as Indian citizens. Between January 1st, 1966 to March 25th of 1971, migrants had to register as foreigners and would gain citizenship after 10 years of residence. And after March 25th of 1971, migrants were to be detected and deported as illegal immigrants. Now here the challenge is to section 6a is petitioners argue that section 6a violates article 6 which deals with citizenship for migrants from Pakistan before July 19 of 1949 as it raises constitutional concerns. Next is critics claim that section 6a violates the right to equality that is article 14 as it applies only to Assam making it discriminatory compared to other states facing migration issues. So, today would be decided whether the section 6a is constitutional or not. Now, let us look into the prelims practice question. With reference to India, consider the following statements. 
there is only one citizenship and one domicile a citizen by birth can only become the head of the state a foreigner once granted citizenship cannot be deprived of it under any circumstances which of the statements given above is or are correct option a one only option b two only option c one and three and option d two and three the right answer is option a one only here of course this statement is right there is only one citizenship and one domicile a citizen by birth only can become the head of the state here only is extreme thus the statement is wrong and a foreigner once granted citizenship cannot be deprived of it under any circumstances which is wrong there are many circumstances where the citizenship can be terminated or renunciated now moving on to the second news the indian army is commemorating the 62nd anniversary of the battle of walong fought during 1962 war with china with a month long series of events these include the inauguration of the renovated walong war memorial and their key infrastructure projects in 1962 indian soldiers held off to advancing the chinese forces for 27 days in the hard terrain of the arunachal pradesh displaying immense bravery even though they have been vastly outnumbered now let us see what is the walong war battle of walong historical overview now looking into the pre war context the sino indian war of 1962 was a result of the long standing border disputes between india and china primarily over the aksai chin region and arunachal pradesh before called as nefa that is the north east frontier agency china's aggressive claims and border inclusions particularly the forward policy have led to the open conflict here looking into the chinese offensive strategy the plas that is the people liberation armies of the eastern advance was a part of the larger strategy to secure their hold over the tibet and strengthen the claims over arunachal pradesh they are push into the walong aim severe indian defenses and control key areas looking into the initial indian response despite being under equipped indian forces had a strong defense holding positions under extreme pressure the tactical delays caused by the indian soldiers disrupted the people liberation army's timelines highlighting the strategic value of delaying enemy's forces now let us move on to the strategic importance of the battle looking into the geopolitical importance walong is located near the tri junction of india china and myanmar control over this region provides strategic depth for both the sides which impacts the security of the entire northeastern frontier thus it also offers a key access route to the tibet for china next is the eastern sector focus here in the eastern sector walong was critical due to its proximity to the mcmahon line the boundary between tibet and arunachal pradesh defending this area meant preventing the chinese from encroaching into india's northeast next is the air and logistic dependency due to the rugged terrain and poor road infrastructure indian forces at walong relied entirely on air supplies for provisions and reinforcements highlighting the importance of air logistics in high altitude warfare and finally is the terrain as a battlefield multiplier the harsh terrain with elevations between almost 3000 to 14000 feet played a key role in the battle despite limited resources the indian army's familiarity with the region helped them to hold a much larger chinese force shaping india's military history here the battle was seen as symbol of defiance here despite the defeat in the 1962 war battles like walong symbolize indian soldiers courage against a strong enemy next is post 1962 reforms here the laws led to major military reforms including modernization high altitude warfare training and better equipment providing new military infrastructure post war efforts focused on strengthening india's northeastern presence by building air bases helipads and logistic systems for extreme conditions next is having a infrastructure development post 1962 here looking into the road and air connectivity following the 1962 war the government undertook large scale projects to enhance road connectivity to areas like walong kibitu vital for defense example the darbuk shyog dollar beck oldi 
road. Next is the airfield and forward bases. The Indian Air Force established forward air bases in the region, allowing quicker mobilization of troops and supplies. For example, airfields like Tezpur and Choba were expanded to enhance the operational capacity. Next is the border road organizations. The BRO has been vital in building roads in tough terrains to ensure the connectivity to forward areas. Example, Sila Tunnel. This under construction tunnel in Arunachal Pradesh will ensure all weather access to Tawang, reducing the travel time and improving military logistics. And finally is to have a defense modernization. India has introduced Rafale jets into the Indian Air Force to boost air defense and increase the capabilities, especially along the line of control. Now moving to the practice question. Consider the following statements regarding the Battle of Wolong during 1962 of the Indochina War. The Battle of Wolong took place in the easternmost part of the Arunachal Pradesh. The Indian forces were supported by road-based supply lines during the battle. The battle demonstrated the need for improved infrastructure and military preparedness in high altitude region. Which of the above statements are correct? Option A, 1 and 2. Option B, 1 and 3. Option C, 2 and 3. And Option D, 1, 2 and 3. The right answer is Option B, 1 and 3. Now moving on to the last article from the live mint. The article talks about the Indian rupees depreciation which have recently hit an all time low of 84 rupees against the US dollar. The rupees fall is attributed to factors like the foreign investor withdrawals and global geopolitical tensions. A weaker rupee impact imports making them more expensive but benefits the exporters. However, global economic fragility has decreased the export growth. Now let us see what is meant by the fall in the value of the rupee. A fall in the value of the rupee refers to the depreciation of Indian rupee that is the INR relative to other currencies, particularly major global currencies like the US dollars, euros or pounds or sterlings. When the value of the rupee falls, it means that more rupees are required to buy one unit of a foreign currency. For example, if the exchange rate changes from 70 rupees to 75 rupees per 1 US dollars, the rupee has depreciated because it takes more rupees to buy the same amount of dollars. Now let us look into the general reasons behind the fall of a value. First is the inflation. Here, higher inflation in India compared to other countries can reduce the purchasing power of the rupee. Next is the interest rates. If interest rates in India are lower than in other countries, investors might move their money to higher yielding currencies, causing the rupee to depreciate. Next is the trade deficit. Here, a trade deficit that is when imports exceed the exports, it can lead to higher demand for foreign currency, reducing the value of rupee. Next is the foreign capital outflows. When foreign investors withdraw their investments from Indian markets, it increases demand for foreign currency, therefore putting downward pressure on the rupees. Next is the global economic events. Changes in global markets such as the rising oil prices or geopolitical tensions can also weaken the rupee. Now let us see measures to protect the value of money. First is to have a foreign exchange reserves management. The RBI have been actively intervening in the foreign exchange that is the forex market by selling or buying the US dollars or other foreign currencies. When the rupee depreciates sharply, the RBI can sell dollars from its forex reserves to increase the supply of foreign currency. Thus, it can help to stabilize the rupee's value. Next is to have a monetary policy adjustments. The RBI may adjust the interest rates to make the rupee more attractive to the foreign investors. For example, by raising the repo rate, that is the rate at which the RBI lends money to commercial banks. Thus, by raising the repo rate, India can offer higher returns on investments in rupees, encouraging foreign capital inflows and supporting the rupees value. Next is the bilateral and multilateral currency swap arrangements. Here, India has entered into currency swap agreements with countries like Japan, the UAE and other nations to ensure access to foreign currencies in times of important needs. These agreements help to increase the foreign exchange reserve and reduce pressure on the rupee in times of depreciation. 
Next is to have the government bond inclusion in global indices. The government and the RBI have worked towards including Indian government bonds in global bond indices. Once included, this move will attract large foreign investments into Indian bonds, providing support to the rupee. India has been officially included in the global bond index in the 2024. And next is to export promotion schemes. To increase the demand for Indian goods abroad and thereby increase foreign exchange earnings, the government has introduced several initiatives such as the production linked incentive that is the PLI scheme to boost exports in sectors like the electronics, pharmaceuticals, textiles and automobiles. So I hope this covers what the value of a rupee would be and its uh, topics associated with it. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give a like, comment and a share. And to further not to miss any other contents, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a nice day.